Hi, my name is Jojo and I have been living in a tent for two years in Sweden. One year over there on the other end of the lake, half a year in the forest and half a year on the raft. And today I wanted to give you my honest opinion on the tent and if I would buy it again. And as a full disclaimer, I'm not paid to do this. I bought the tent myself, the one I used in the forest and on the island. The second tent I had, the one on the raft, which was a little bit different model, I got for free by Canvas Camp, but without any obligations. They didn't even ask to make a review video like this. So I am completely free to tell you my honest opinion about this tent. This is the Sibley 500 Pro Tech by Canvas Camp. First I had the normal version with just one door and this version I had on the raft later was the one with two doors so that I'm able to see through the tent when I'm steering the raft, which is quite important. It is a cotton canvas tent, has a cotton fabric 300 gram per square meter and a quite rugged plastic floor that you can zip in to the tent. So it's kind of sealed all around. Why did I choose exactly this tent? There are some competitors in the market uh, but important for me was the quality of the fabric. You can zip in the floor, but the main reason for me was uh, the accessories you can get to it. Because for this tent, and I think all the other tents from Canvas Camp as well, you can have that as a second layer over the tent. And for winter you get more insulation and it protects the cotton canvas. So this was then the major reason for me to go with Canvas Camp, because of this nice accessory. The ropes are okay, they, they do what they do, they come with this plastic tensioning thing. However, if you camp in winter and you have snow on the tent, you make a fire in the stove in the tent, it is melting, it's running down those lines and it will freeze. So um, in winter it's not possible to, to um, make those more tight. That's why for winter I would always use uh, things like this, where you have uh, like this metal thing, even when th those are frozen, you can still uh, work with them, even when you have uh, thick uh, gloves on. So I would always uh, replace those standard things if you are out for longer. And after one and one and a half years, they they start uh, started to break. Uh, but of course, they were out in all weather uh, the whole season. Another thing are the tent anchors. They are okay, they do their job. However, I would always recommend to use proper anchors like these. Uh, what I like about those is that they have this thing welded on top, like with these, that when they are completely stuck in the grass and you step on it barefoot, you don't cut yourself. Uh, so that's okay, but they are a bit too short uh, for me, especially for heavy winds. I wouldn't feel safe with those. That's why I used these. I don't remember where I got them from. Um, but yeah. Of course they are heavier than those, but when you have a tent like this, weight is not something to consider anyway. And you also have these ones. Um, I think they are used for the floor. Ah yeah, those are the ones for the floor. Okay, so let's set it up here on the ice. I never set up a tent on the ice. Let's see how it works. The setup of this tent is quite simple. In my case, I have the floor and the tent separate, but you can also keep them connected when stored away. You start by attaching the floor to the ground, close the zip all the way around and assemble the center pole. And one thing that I really like about this tent pole is that it is connected with a spring inside. So when you put it together, oh, it should hold together. Probably that's only for summer. I stored it now in freezing temperatures and it's not holding together anymore. Anyway. The pole from the first tent I got had a metal wire and a rubber band in it. The one I have here has just a rubber band in a plastic covering. I guess it broke because I stored it in freezing temperatures. Raising up the tent seems quite heavy, 
but the trick is to do that slowly, so that the air has time to flow inside the tent. After that you put in the anchors for the ropes. Not too close to the tent, otherwise the side walls won't be straight. By the way, these side walls were the reason why I chose a bell tent over a teepee tent. And finally, the pole for the door. Yeah, so basically that's how it looks like. But you can see, it already holds up with just four uh, ropes tightened. On top here, if you wonder if this is watertight, there are some plastic caps that come with the tent that you can put on top. I don't have them here now, so there is no water coming in there. And also not anywhere else. It also has a mesh door. Oh yeah, there's only one thing with the mesh door that I would make differently, which is inside here. Oh man, that's quite dirty inside still. We, we haven't cleaned it properly in October when we left. So in here you can zip and unzip the, the floor. You can take out the floor and the tent is still standing, so that is quite nice. So you can just set up the tent itself and you can close the front door here as well. What is practical here, what I like, is that the zips have this extra thing in the end, so it is quite, quite a bit easier to mount the zips even when the tent is set up and under tension. The only thing where I have some questions about the design is that you have this mesh door here, but there is a, a hole and you can come inside here. It's probably not so much for mosquitoes, but we have had rodents uh, come in here. Some mice came into the tent through that gap. So uh, I would just put some Velcro here so that it's, it's uh, closed. I'm not quite sure why this is like it is. But even if this is closed, you can see that rodents would come in anyway. In our case, they were just biting through this really, really tough floor fabric. So you always need to take care of the food and put it inside boxes and don't leave anything there. Another nice detail are those uh, straps here that also go all around where you can mount the, the side wall and also the mesh door here. If you open it all the way, on the other side you have a loop and you can just take that here through the loop and then tighten it like this and it just holds. You don't need to tie anything. So this is quite smart. So would I buy it again? Yes. Would I take it as a gift again? Absolutely. I think for that price point in that area of these types of tents is the best thing you can get. It's probably, not probably, it's properly and also probably fabricated <laughs> quite well. All the seams are sewn quite nicely. I never had any issues with anything breaking. It held up to really strong winds. Only the tent fly in front of the tent, but it was clear that this would be blown away. It survived quite long. The fabric was good. Yeah, there are minor things that I would change, like the proper tent anchors and and other tensioning mechanism That's, that goes for every tent, I would say. All the accessories you can get, like the tent fly in front that fits, um, the second layer on top that you can get for winter, which I would very much recommend for winter use. So all of these made this the perfect tent for my use. Yeah. Yeah. I think now I'll take the drone and and fly to the place where the where the raft is stuck and see if the raft is still there. I also I would have wished that last year it would have been a winter like this to be able to just walk out on the lake and just have the whole open space like it is now. Yeah, what else? We have a project planned for summer that we are working on. Uh, it will be with the tent, it will be with the raft, 
It won't be on this lake here. It will be somewhere else, but more details are about to come. Oh, it's really nice out here now. <sighs> yes, I wish you all the best, all of you who are watching. And we'll end this video now with... with... Goodbye. Hey, doll.